So, for whatever reason, YouTube is not showing my reaction to Mad Season Wake Up Live at the Mall. For whatever reason, it's uploaded, it's there, it's just not showing. So, I've just deleted it, right? Because I don't know what's YouTube's problem, but whatever, I just thought, ah, let it go. I've tried to upload it three times, I've tried to find solutions for it, nothing, it's not working. So, I'm just going to give you this, this review of it. That song being played live was like matching what I heard in the audio. You know, it's crazy. I think of a few Alison Chain songs that I've heard, um, you know, the live version. I prefer it, you know, to the audio version. Junkhead, for me, the live version is way better than the audio. And, and that's a theme with a few of these bands, to be honest. But this one here was particularly haunting for me because you see him there and the backstory of him trying to get himself clean. So he, he fully understood what he was doing to himself, right? He fully knew this. And I believe that that song, that this is my own belief, by the way, I believe that that song was written as a motivator for himself, right? I believe that he was maybe at a critical stage of his, you know, of his recovery or his attempted recovery. And he realized what he was doing to himself. And he wrote that song as a motivator to himself to keep on going. Because like he said in the song, slow suicide is no way to go. And then when you hear the tragic ending, you sit here and you wish that he had listened and taken his own advice. But here's the thing, right? And here's the other side to it. Us humans, right? We self-medicate all the time. Whether you want to admit it or not, whether you realize it or not. Whenever you get to Friday, tough week at work, what do you want to do? Go to the bar and have a drink. You know, take some drugs. You know, just, just recreationally. You know, just to forget the shittiness of the week. Hell, it doesn't even have to be the week. You could just be having a terrible Wednesday. You know, four, five o'clock hits. You're in the pub. But it happens. We all self-medicate somehow, some way. Hell, if you're vegan or leaving a really or leading a very, very healthy life, you're probably taking a shot of lemon juice or something. But really, we all self-medicate at some point, you know, in our lives. We do that because we just want to forget the, the, the shittiness of the day, the week, the hour, doesn't matter. Well, we all do it. So, and we even do, we do it when, when there's tragedy, of course. And when you are struck with tragedy... You go back to that one thing that will try to numb the pain and make you forget. He knew that, Blaine knew that he had a running battle with, with heroin. It was him versus heroin for such a long time. And just when it looked like he was winning, you know, the war and he was getting over it, tragedy hits. And when tragedy hits, when you're an addict or when you self-medicate, you go back to that one thing that makes you forget. And he went back to that one thing that he believed was going to make him forget. And at that point, there was no getting off. He was going to be on that ride and he was going to stay on that ride until his tragic end. And that's, you know, the most heartbreaking thing of listening to that song. Because I sit there and I realize and I'm like, if only you took your own advice. This song would be more powerful. But that song was not written in vain. Like I said in my original reaction to that, to, to the audio, that song was written in vain. It was written as a message, right? And almost as a gift to anybody who's going through some shit, to anybody who's self medicating, to anybody who's an addict, to anybody who's going through anything that just doesn't feel like it's ending. Listen to that song. And it could be played in any setting. You listen to that song. And that song, that song was what? It came out in 95. Like I said about, you know, songs that you that I was listening to during lockdown. There are songs that are like, you know, a salad. Right? A salad with all the trimmings on there. And then there are songs that are like McDonald's. That aren't worth nothing. That song is... Salad, rich wine, 
you know, whatever, you, what, just put your own interpretation to it. That song was written in 95 and you can play it at any point, right, in the next 30 years or more, if we're still around, that is. And that song would fit. And then that's what I mean when you're listening to music that has meaning and has feeling to it. Because that song there will never get old. It will never get old. There are songs that are timeless. That when you pull them out, they make you feel a certain way and they speak to you directly. And that song there, when you're going through a rough time, when you're doing some shit to yourself that you shouldn't be doing, you play that song. And tell me you wouldn't want to get better. So that's Lane's gift to us. And that song is 25 years old. And it still fits perfectly. That's my interpretation of it anyway. That's Lane's gift to people. That song was not written in vain. And if you take it in vain, you're a cunt. That's the way I see it. Anyway. If you liked my interpretation of this song, let me know in the comments. And if you comment, subscribe. I don't know why you, I see some of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking to you. I don't understand how you comment and you don't subscribe. I just don't understand that. So if you comment, subscribe. All right, cool. I'm hungry. I'll catch you on the next one.